What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in a living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time! djlittlerock.com check availability and get a free price quote and maybe you can have me at your next event you know i like to party with the people the people need to be entertained are you not entertained let me entertain you i gotta stop singing i gotta stop singing i'm sure i'm losing listeners and viewers every time i sing stop singing it's not my forte I like to party with the people. I play other people's music. I promote other people. And uh, today on the program, I have Nate Miller. Nate Miller. The famous Nate Miller. All right. Well, if you don't know who Nate Miller is, you're going to find out in the next few minutes more about Nate Miller. This week's shows, I have one, count them, one public show this week. My faithful people on Friday night, the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, the video dance party, karaoke jam. Yeah, I said karaoke. You're the stars of the show on a Friday night. Karaoke jam. They got a full bar, kitchens open, pool tables. They got a pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you want to try to make some money on a Friday night, I encourage you to check out the Rab and get involved with the pool tournament. And then while you're playing pool or between games you could come sing right next to me video dance party karaoke jam yeah i said dance party i'll play the music you want to dance to and you know you never know what i'm going to be into last week it was 80s week before it was kind of heavy metal uh before that it was kind of hip-hop from the 90s i don't know whatever strikes me sometimes i i pick a random person out there in the crowd and say what year what year did you graduate high school oh 2008 hey that's what we'll play we'll we'll hear cole plays viva la vida I just pulled that one out of my head. I think that was a song from 2008. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll be your human jukebox. I'll play the music you want. Out at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. 8 p.m. until 12.30 in the AM. Come on out and play with us. All right, let's get into it with Nate Miller. My man, Nate Miller. I got him on Skype. So let's Skype Nate Miller now. There he is. <laughs> Nate Miller in the house. What what's, is happening? What's going on? I don't know whether to call you Keys or Dan. Either way, man. Either way. <laughs> I've been trying to figure. Been trying to figure that out for months. Well, the moniker that I've been uh, strapped with, I guess, uh, since I was in the Florida Keys, has been Keys Dan. But if you look gotcha. on my Facebook page, my real name sitting right there. But the Sweet. the Google hits come up mostly on keys dan so i can't give it up even though i'm living here in central arkansas nate miller my man dude you are a broadcaster and that's about all i'm gonna say about you until you tell the people who you are awesome thanks man um yeah i'm nate miller i've been doing my my show i don't like calling it a podcast because everybody has a podcast and not everybody has a show on the network that I do. Um, it's Fishbowl Radio Network. It's My show is called The Basement Show with Nate Miller. It's on every Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. It used to be two two hours a week, but I had to scale it back down to one just because we're looking for sponsors and uh, it's not always easy to find. <laughs> Man, it's really time consuming to, to build these podcasts, to put out content, to create for the people. And you, you put these things out and you hope that people are going to like them. And then, mm -hmm. you know, once you, you develop a, a knack for them, you hope that maybe you can monetize them. Hey, if you can make something that you love into a, uh, into a, a, you know, something that you could do for a living, what a wonderful yeah. thing. Isn't that the American dream? <laughs> exactly. It, it really is. But you, you've been doing this. Uh, how long have you been in the broadcast business, if you will? What year? Oh, let's see. Um, it was 2012. So in September, it'll be nine years. So what were you doing before that in your previous life, before you decided that you had a knack for the gift of gab? Well, I've I've always had the you know that that bug, I guess you could say. Uh, graduated in uh, 2011 with an associate's in radio broadcasting. So, um, no, I'm sorry, that was 2008. 
it was 2008 that I graduated from uh, Brown College in Minnesota. And uh, it wasn't until 2012 that I actually found, you know, this opportunity that I'm with now. And that's led to other opportunities. And it's been a great ride. All right. Well, the the two uh, points that you can find on your Facebook page is where you're from and where you live. You're from mm-hmm. Hazlitt, Michigan. It's cold up there. I'm glad really that you is. find yourself in Texas. Tell me about <laughs> uh, a young Nate Miller in Michigan. Young Nate Miller in Michigan. Well, I was cold, <laughs> like you said. <laughs> um, there was just, um, you know, I was just I. Grew up like any other kid, you know, enjoyed sports, you know, just being outside, riding, riding bikes and whatnot. I had this really cool, because uh, I, I have cerebral palsy, so it's like, it was kind of hard to ride, ride a two-wheeler. I had this really cool three-wheel bike that you sat back in and you just pedaled. It's really hard to go up hills. Um, but, um, you know, I, I just had kind of a normal childhood. Um, got to... Uh, Interested in broadcasting early. I've always loved mo- mo- movies, music, sports, baseball mostly. And, um, yeah. Well, you're saying normal childhood. Uh, the kids these days, yes. And I, I know I'm dating myself. I'm 52 years old. And I remember in the in the late, mm-hmm. in the the late mid to late 70s, even the early 80s, I rode yeah. my bikes all around town. Uh, I was yeah. living in, in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, yeah. near the Everglades. So I rode my bikes with uh, alligators and uh, and all kinds of wildlife and snakes. And I liked it, you know. And, and, and I don't even know how, how old you are, but you're of an age where you played outside you you say that you go outside i have a 15 year old daughter that never goes outside never <laughs> well, this, this was the early 90s so okay but i mean we're still pre-internet you know we're not connected on social media i did run a bbs board in the in the 80s and that was the earliest earliest uh inkling of what an internet or social media a BBS board was uh, wordplay. You can do a maybe like a Dungeons and Dragons type game online and kind of chat back and forth. So it was really the beginnings of that. But you were you say you were growing up in the nineties mm-hmm. in, in Michigan, uh, and me as a Southern boy. Uh, well, I, I've heard that Miami is the biggest suburb of of New York. So I, I've been called a Yankee from Miami, uh, you know, a lot of times in my life. But, you know, being in, in the north where I figure it's 11 months out of the year, it's snowing. You know, how, how do you keep – can you get outside and play and riding your your three-wheeler? That's, that's pretty cool, man. I like a three-wheeler. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can't really get out inside, outside and ride it during the winter. But, you know, there are other things to do in the winter outside, you know, building snowmen, sledding, and all that kind of stuff. So so how's the family life? What are your mom and dad doing? What are, Any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I'm actually the, uh, the youngest of four boys. Um, one of them, one of them uh, lives in Michigan. The other one lives in Cleveland. And unfortunately, one of them passed away about 15 years ago. So well, I'm sorry mm-hmm. to hear about that, man. It's hard uh, when a sibling goes. And, and you did have... Uh, you know, some time with some brothers growing up. Mm-hmm. Were you fighting uh, all the time, or uh, okay? All, you said you had all the time. <laughs> but did they take it easy on you because you said you had uh, cerebral palsy, some kind of a a different ability? I don't even know what to call it. I'm I'm not PC. Okay. I'm 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 of a certain age where I don't know uh, a, a different ability. Uh, but mm-hmm. um, you know, did they take it easy on you, or were you uh, one of the one of the boys? A little bit of both. <laughs> I got you. I got yeah. you. So all right. Well. Tell me about cerebral palsy and growing up with that. I'm sure people are going to be interested in in uh, how it is in the world. Uh, are you are you able to walk well mm-hmm. or going upstairs or or you know the the different the, the different challenges of of being in a in a in a world that maybe wasn't made completely for you. Yes, stairs are definitely a challenge. Um, it affects my left side. So I walk with a limp on, on the left side. I use a walker every now and then. I use a cane. Um, it has an eight ball on the end of it. And um, <laughs> so, you know, I just, I, I go at my own pace, but I still go. Is it a, a magic eight ball where you could turn it upside down and say all signs point to yes? I wish. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I, I remember Polly in the, um, what was it, Goodfellas? Uh, he, uh-huh. he, he didn't move fast for anybody. 
you mm-hmm. know, so you move at your own pace, man. And, and do you find that people slow down for you and, and, and they kind of like it? Hey man, I, I see more of the world. If I'm moving slower, I know when I'm, when I first learned how to drive, I felt like I missed a lot of the world. And when I was mm-hmm. on my bike, it was different. And, and I even, I took up a, you know, a lot of walking around the block and, you know, you see things. If you slow things down, do you have right. that perspective? You know, I kind of do. Um, I don't drive, um, not, not because like I'm lazy or I don't want to. Um, it's just, I don't really think I should. Um, a lot of people don't really see this with CP. It affects your depth perception a lot. And it's just like, I don't really know how that would translate with 6,000 pounds of heavy, heavy machinery surrounding me. So um, I'm thinking of myself and I'm thinking of the other drivers on the road, you know? See, I, I didn't know any of that. I, I I grew up, my best buddy, John Canada, he's been on this podcast before. He's a um, great name. Uh, yeah, John Canada the third. So there were two others be- before yeah. him and he had um, epilepsy uh, growing up. But I remember that, uh, I think I only witnessed maybe a couple of grand mal seizures and one or two, you know, and most of them were very petite. I remember one time we were having dinner and, you know, he was in the middle of a story and he kind of. Sure. And then, you know, went phased out and phased back in, but that affected, you know, his ability to drive. And, uh, you know, I would put him, uh, eventually I got a a motorcycle, an ATC, an Mm all-terrain vehicle, a three-wheeler. And I would put him on the back of him, uh, on the back of it. And his mom would get so mad that I put him in the back of a motorcycle. Come on. You know, <laughs> did, did your, your mom and dad kind of treat you with kid gloves or, or did they uh, put you out in the world? Uh, you know, they, they put me out in the world as much as they could, but they still kind of realized, you know, there are limitations. So not, not a whole lot, but just like enough to kind of make you worry. <laughs> well, um, you know, ma- like Clint Eastwood said, a man's got to know his limitations. I think, was go. that Dirty Harry? Hmm. Was it Dirty Harry? I don't remember, but I think it, I think it was. Don't, don't look this up, people. This is all facts that I tell you. And you, you <laughs> listen and you take it as fact. No, I'm kidding. Question that everything. Be, that should be a disclaimer at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Question everything. Well, Nate Miller, I mean, I'm kind of leading you in this conversation and, and I'm kind of interested in, in things that you did growing up through the years. Uh, but, you know, in, in the hour that we, or so that we have, I, I want to know, uh, you know, uh, my, I and my, my listeners want to know a, a bit about you and how you came to be and what you do. And then, you know, towards the end, I want to know everything there is to know about baseball because I don't know anything about sports at all. <laughs> I say I say that you know, and working on a sports station in, in uh, Little Rock for a while too, and I I didn't know much, but I worked with a lot of people that knew a whole lot more. So sure. continue, Nate Miller, through the years, man. Uh, h- how long did you stay in Michigan, and and when did you get out of there, and and did you move around uh, the states or whatever? Well, uh, I stayed in Michigan up until I was eighteen, right around our. We're right around that time I graduated high school. Then I moved to um, Minnesota, and uh, that's where I got my associates in radio broadcasting. And then um, <laughs> that actually took me to Montana for a brief time. And when I say brief, I mean brief for about three weeks um, because I worked at a country radio station for about a month, and it just – it, it wasn't for me, not not so much the job, but more so the location. It was it was a town of about 1,200 people. It was um, no restaurants. The biggest restaurant was the corner bar. The nearest Walmart, I kid you not, was 85 miles away. <laughs> Got it. Now, in what capacity and were you working at that station? I was on air. Okay. Days, nights, weekends? Yeah. You know, I think it was afternoons, actually. Afternoons. You did the afternoon drive, maybe three to seven or something? Yeah, it was about about that time. And really, I mean, it was, like I said, it was a good job. I just, I wasn't really happy there. You know, you need your, like, it's, it sounds crazy, but don't take for granted all of the the little things that are around you. Oh, I understand completely. Uh, Well, in the 90s, I guess that's when you were there. What, What year was that? Um, in Michigan or Montana? Well, when you got to the your first on air job, was that the first one? Oh, this was two thousand nine. But yes, this this was the first one. 
and and you know you you were uh, in, in school. I guess they taught you TV and radio, maybe all you know little aspects. Uh, yeah, it was it was more so radio. Okay, and um, a, a little bit of editing, uh, some cool mm-hmm. edit, maybe two thousand nine. I guess they were. Yeah, it was still cool edit, maybe Pro yep. Tools. Did you learn how to splice? Yeah, <laughs> yep. uh, it was it was mostly uh, Adobe Audition that we worked with. Adobe Audition. That's exactly what I'm recording the audio on right now, which was cool edit uh, before Adobe bought uh, bought the company, and, nice. and it looks almost exactly the same. Uh, yep. You know, the the basic green with the uh, with the wave lines on there, and it's mm. pretty easy once you get the knack of it. And I, I'm letting people know, once you get the knack of it, you can pretty much see breaths. Yeah. You can see spaces that you need to cut mm-hmm. out. It, you know, the, it says cut and paste, uh, mm-hmm. which is which just a throwback to the to the splicing of tape way yeah. back in the day. Once you get good at it, it's fun. <laughs> I just learned over the last year, well, I've been using Adobe Audition or Cool Edit since 2003 when I went back for a refresher in uh, at uh, Connecticut Schools of Broadcasting. I think they had a campus. Well, I didn't think. They had a campus down in Miami, uh, and, and it was like a three-month course, and they taught you a little TV, a little radio, and stuff like that. Um, and they even taught you how to splice again. I go, but I learned this back in 86 the first time I went to broadcast school, you know. Uh, right. But uh, they, they taught me. I wanted to get a refresher and, and learn those things. And it was nice to go back and, and do that. Uh, did, well, I mean, do you feel like broadcast school taught you everything you needed to know to get on the air? Um, yes, but it didn't really the only thing it didn't teach me was on the, on the job skills. Like you can only learn that after school. That is correct. So those three weeks, that three week stint, you were the afternoon guy and it was before voice tracking. So you maybe had, I don't know if it was all music station, you probably had about four minutes, an hour where you can actually uh, put, you know, say something of meaning or a thought, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, unless it was a talk station, you said it was country. So I'm guessing they had a clock, it, they was were they feeding you the music or were you able to to pick any music? I know in mom and pop stations yeah. you can you can pick the music, but if you work for one of the bigger companies, it's fed to you from a centralized location. Yeah, it was mostly fed. Oh, so, so you were working for one of the big companies, I guess. Actually, like it wasn't really. In fact, it wasn't really big at all. It was like a little house. It wasn't even like your standard like high rise building, and um. Just little house, bad paint job, and you still had all the music provided for you. <laughs> so you had a music director of sorts. I I remember yeah. uh, working for one of the bigger uh, radio companies that owns you know more than two hundred stations. It was fed to you from a se- central company. But then I started working for a mom and pop down in Miami, and it was so it was so much better to have the creative uh, the creative flow. It was. Uh, uh, well, with that one, since, since it was such a good experience, I could say it was Exito 105.5 down in Miami. And uh, it's no longer there. It's defunct now. But it was Spanish and English. And it was cool that I, I would get music off, from people off the streets. And, and they would say, hey, can you play this song? Or you know, But um, did you have any of that when you, when you were on that little station down there? Not really. It was kind of a tightly run ship. Okay. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's that's an experience. That's a, a jumping off point. I think I, 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 I interned my second go around at a country station. Uh, I got to meet uh, Vanilla Ice when he was in his country phase in 2003 or so. Somewhere somewhere in the early 2000s, he was doing ass, ass, baby. Did you get to meet <laughs> anybody or talk to anybody on the radio? That's another thing that, that's fun about radio. Uh, not really at that, at that station. I wasn't really there long enough. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a big dead end right there. Let's move yeah. on. Let's get out of uh, Montana and find out more about Nate Miller. Go. Where, where did you go from there? From there, I went back to Michigan for, let's see, this is 2009. went back to Michigan for about three years, and then I moved to Texas to to do the podcast that I'm on now, or the show that I'm on now. I uh, moved there in uh, 2013. Oh, okay. So you moved to Texas for a program, for an online program. Is yep. it all online? Yes. Okay. And the the Fishbowl Network is that somebody that that reached out to you, or you reached out to them to to hire you on? 
uh, I reached out to them. It's kind of like a, um, it's internet radio, but it's kind of one of these things where just about anybody can sign up for a show. I like that. I like so, that. So w- w- did you pitch them a show that you wanted to do? Uh, yeah, I did. And uh, I started it, I started it in about 2012 and, uh, did, did the show from actually my basement as the title of the show, the basement show. Um, I did that for about a year and then I, I just got kind of bored with it. I still loved it, but I got, I got kind of bored with it. I'm like, I don't really have a lot keeping me here. Um, most of my family is kind of gone in their separate ways. So I, I decided, well, why not just go to, go down to Texas? I knew they were in Arlington, which is always a town that I've liked. And, um, so I thought I'd, I'd go down there, do the show and, you know, see what happens from there. And it's been a, it's been a good ride. Well, what's good about Arlington? There's a lot down here. Um, you got the Cowboy Stadium. You've got the Texas Ranger Stadium. You've got Six Flags. There's just, there's just a lot of fun stuff going on around here. Well, be the tour guide, man. I want to know everything so, there is to know about Arlington. Uh, the, just the <laughs> just the fact that the Cowboys are there. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I guess, uh, quote unquote, the uh, America's team. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I see, and I've been a Doll fan just by proximity. Uh, my whole life, you know, but I, I really haven't followed them since uh, Dan Marino and really uh, Don Shula and Bob Greasy were, were my team, you know, Don Shula being the coach and Bob Greasy being the quarterback. Uh, and, and then I guess in uh, 1972, they had their perfect season. Ah, Miami Dolphins, you know, and that's when you had to be a Dolphin. fan. I guess I was four years old or three. Yeah, not 72, three years old. And, and, and I became a diehard doll fan, which consists of, Hey, I know who they are. You know, I, I don't know who the current quarterback is. I don't know who the current lineup is, but you being right. in proximity of the, of the Cowboys. Well, uh, and I guess you being from Michigan, are you torn between your, your, uh, your love? Not as much as you might think. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, our, it's it's so hard being a Lions fan. It really is. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I do weddings. I, I, I'm a DJ, and down in, in Miami, there's a lot of destination weddings. And one of my sure. favorite destination weddings was a girl from Ohio married a guy from Michigan. And, oh, boy, did I have to play We Don't Give Up at the Old State of Michigan. We're from Ohio. And then I had to play Michigan's fight song as well. Uh-huh. You know, the is the team rivalry that bad up there in Michigan? It is. <laughs> How did they it find is. each other? How did they find love? Uh, that's a question you'll have to ask them because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, speak, uh, speaking of love, you found love. Uh, did you find love in in Arlington or did you uh, transport her down from uh, some other place? No, it was down here in Texas. I live in Arlington. She lives in a town called Mesquite. We're about 45 minutes away from each other. So, Well, that's yep. cool. Pursuit of happiness. It's always nice to have somebody in your corner. What does she think mm-hmm. about all your broadcast endeavors? She loves it. She loves the voice. Ah, <laughs> yes. Man, you have a built... Uh, I got told a, a while back, you have a built-in compressor. <laughs> I, I took it as a compliment. You know, uh-huh. you have a built-in compressor. <laughs> Sounds like it hurts. I, <laughs> I guess you know, as I know the compressor on my on my uh, digital on my board, it limits the the uh, peaks on a mic, and this right. way it won't it'll cut the peas and and such. But uh, as long as you have a good mic, I guess you'll sound a little bit better. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. But tell tell me about the equipment that you're using, and do you um do you do it all from your basement with your equipment? I used to. Now I actually do it from their studios. It's actually, um, their studios are based in Globe Life Park. That's actually the old Texas Rangers ballpark. And um, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Rookie with Dennis Quaid, but it's that ballpark at the very end. I couldn't tell you which one it is. I'm sure I've seen the movie, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, but I, I'll have to revisit that movie just so I can see yep. where it is that Nate Miller's working. Do people yep. get to visit? Is it a, a a hustling and bustling place? Is it a lot of different offices, a lot of different podcast studios or radio studios? How is it formed? Yeah, it's sort of like half office space, half soccer field right now. 
<laughs> um, they turned the baseball field into a soccer field, and sometimes they use it as a football field as well. But it's mostly an office space right now. Well, tell me about what you're doing in that in that capacity. Do you do any of the? Well, what kind of a what kind of a program is it that you're running, and um, what have you run since? Well, since leaving that little that little town of Montana, uh, what is your your broadcasting? Uh, where did your broadcasting endeavors take you? It's mostly sports talk right now, um, mostly surrounding baseball and a little bit of hockey, and um, we talk a little bit about fo- football too, but mostly when that's in season. Um, so it was just, and really before my co-host joined me, it was like half sports talk, half music. And, um, there I, I got to pick my own music. So fantastic. Nate Miller, man, I've, I find I've, I've tried to do podcasts on my own, but it's nice to have somebody to bounce ideas off of. You, yes. you need people. You, I, I got to give shout outs to all the people that have helped me along the way. Cause there's no, you know, I've, I've had to run a, a morning radio show all by myself. Thankfully it was a music show. So, you know, I'm, I have the morning paper. And I'm just, mm-hmm. yes, the actual newspaper kids, you know, you, that's what you do on the way into, into work back in the late eighties, early nineties, even through until the two thousands, you know, pick up the newspaper and just rattle off whatever's interesting on there. And then if yeah. I was at a, a music station, I would pick up a, a record album. Yes. And a vinyl record album and read the liner notes. Hey, that's cool. That's a cool inform. That's cool information about those people. Do you read uh, stats uh, off of, uh, uh, off the different. Uh, team players, I guess. Yeah, I do. Well, we we do a little bit of both. We do stats and we do sport, uh, sports talk, and just really any, anything else we can vamp about. <laughs> well, I told you my uh, my experience with sports talk was ninety six point five, the source down in uh-huh. Little Rock, Arkansas. It was it's now defunct. It it was there for about yeah maybe a year. Crane Media, and and it was a lot of fun. I, I worked with. Uh, quite a few razor, uh, Razorbacks, ex Razorbacks, I guess. The Clint Sterner and Michael Smith and and um, oh, uh, Pat Bradley was a basketball player. The uh, the other two, the aforementioned, were football players. And then I had uh, Wes Moore, who is a, a fantastic broadcaster here in Little Rock, Arkansas. And, and and they taught me so much. Pretty much all I was doing was playing intro and outro music and and uh, you know potting the mics for them. But it was a nice experience. Every once in a while, they would let me on on the air and take some of their time because you, you need to fill four hours. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard to do it by yourself. Yes, it is. But tell me about tell me about the co-host and how did that come about? Oh man, she's awesome. Her name her get this her legal name is Billy Ball. <laughs> so she used to be she used to be a tour guide for the Texas Rangers, and that's kind of how we met. Um, <laughs> And we've uh, we've kept in t- uh, touch for over the last three years. Uh, she lives here in Arlington as well. And uh, one day I just invited her on the show, like just as a guest, you know, uh, just kind of go back and forth. And uh, she loved it so much. And uh, we just kind of worked her into the show. <laughs> Yeah, like I say, fill in time, man. You got to have some people. I would take a lot of phone calls, but those are yeah. kind of uh, tricky because you never know what they're going to say. And yes, mm-hmm. I, I had a seven second delay, but if I didn't hit that button in time, you might get something on the air that you didn't want to have on the air. Uh, yep. You know, but to, if you're talking sports, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about mm-hmm. sports. Do you? Is it mostly local? Uh, teams that you're talking about or since you're going worldwide do you talk about world sports uh both actually we talk um this this was this is kind of rare that we talk about it but we talk about soccer sometimes um worldwide soccer and but other than that we just stick to texas teams that's so funny soccer is the most popular game in the world every Mm -hmm. every 10 year old boy gets made to play soccer at at some point and then by the time he's 12 or 13 he forgets Mm -hmm. all about it he don't want he you know seven years old that's what they put in front of you a soccer ball and they tell you go kick it around with your friends but what what, why do we give up soccer in this in this uh in this country it is so fast I, every mm-hmm. you know, if I do get a chance to watch soccer, and that's not very often, you watch those guys run 
from one side of the field to the other side of the field to get one, two goals in a game. Mm-hmm. Which, yep. which is why that famous announcer had to, I don't even know his name, had to come up with goal yep. because he only gets one or two of those every game. That's not high uh-huh. scoring. Uh, you know, what, have you developed a catchphrase over the years? Um, no, not really. It just, um, I mean, really, the only thing that's stuck has been the basement show. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, you know, you, you got to develop a catchphrase, kid. That That's yeah, what's yeah. going to get you famous. <laughs> there you go. But, I mean, tell me about the the, uh, the following. And, and do you have, is it a, now, you do it live on mm-hmm. Wednesdays from 1 to 3? 1 to 2. 1 to 2 until you get sponsors. Come on, yeah. sponsors. Come right. on, baby. Monetize this thing. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, do you give them a little a little free bump every once in a while? You go, uh, come on, Nike. <laughs> no, but I should. Yeah, yeah. You throw a free one here and there. I know. I've been listening to. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts myself, but uh, mm-hmm. I've been listening to Conan O'Brien's, and he he wonders why he's losing sponsors from time to time. And um, his producer always says, because uh, you give them free spots, especially if they have yeah. a, an interesting name. So he's like, he's always talking about Magoosh because it's because it because of the the way you can say it with a funny accent a, a funny voice so uh mm-hmm. yeah if you want your your uh if you want to get a free plug uh, just have a funny name so i mean what uh, ha, what kind of a sponsorship are you looking for i mean would you take a, a sponsor from anywhere anybody or do you have limits um no not really i mean as long as they're interested as long as they're interested in the show, um, I'm sure we can work around it. We might we might get a few eye rolls from our listeners, but <laughs> now, when you I, you record from one to two, do you put it out as a podcast as well that could be consumed at, at any time? Yes, um, I don't actually do that. That's more of the administrative side oh. of the of the station. So what we do is we we record the show live at from one to two, and then the uh, office staff takes that and then archives it and that's usually uh, then it's usually up in the archives uh the next day so you can go to my bio page at fishbowl or i'm sorry at fbrn.us um you find uh the basement show on there and then like somewhere on the bio page i think it's to the right there's a list of like the last seven or eight shows that i've done and uh, you can listen to those whenever you want Nate Miller, you know, that was one of the things about being on terrestrial radio that I I kind of didn't like. I never made anything. I never built anything. And nothing lasted any longer than, you know, the, the time it took for me to think about it and and have it come out through my cake hole into a microphone and then out on the air. And then it's gone forever. Yeah, I, I, we had a, a recorder that would record for 24 hours. And, you know, whatever you were saying, in case the FCC wanted to check your tapes. But then uh, after that 24 hours or sometimes some of the stations were a full week, it would just record over that same yeah. thing. One of the nice things about having uh, online or an online presence is that you, you are building something. You're building some content. You're, you're giving something, uh, you know, somebody who might have thought a certain way or, or had a, a certain idea, you're able to change minds. Uh, what what goals do you want to to come out of having your basement podcast or your basement show? Uh, my goal is to first of all build as much of an audience as we can. Right now, per week, I mean, we're not doing bad, but we can always b- do better. Um, right now, I um, my show averages about nine thousand listeners a week. That so, is respectable. Uh, I think I was working, working at 9412.com. It was a, a, a rock station out of Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but I would, uh, I would use, the, uh, you know, through technology of the early 2000s, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, get into their system and broadcast from my, from my home in Miami, Florida. Or was it might have been Key Largo, Florida, <laughs> down in the Florida Keys. But I would broadcast from down there, uh, rock and roll. And it was kind of cool, uh, you know, that, that I had that ability. And, and they had a, a big built-in following of thousands and thousands of people. 
and from all the content that's out there on the internet that they could consume, having 9,000 listeners is mm-hmm. pretty respectable. Thanks. Um, as a station, we average about 8.7 million listeners per month. Fantastic, man. I mean, I'm sure as the station is, is monetized, but you, you don't get a piece of that just being part of the, the fishbowl network? <laughs> Uh, not yet. Um, that's going to depend on sponsors. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, that's, uh, primary, I guess primarily what we're here to do is to, is to find you some sponsors, get you some more, uh, traffic to your show. Uh, and it's, and it could be found and you have a.com or how, what's the best way to, to find you, Nate Miller. Yeah. Uh, best way to find the show is go to FBRI. Art, yeah, can talk. FBRN.us. FBRN. Yep. Dot US. What's the FBRN stand for? Fishbowl Radio Network. Fishbowl <laughs> Radio Network. That's fantastic. All right. And yep. and and I guess you have links to all the shows on that site. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, and do you want people to connect to you personally as well? Yeah, uh, the Basement Show with Nate Miller is on Facebook. Um, just go to Facebook and. Uh, search the basement show uh, with Nate Miller. Um, it's got to be specific. <laughs> and, um, um, I'm also on Twitter at basement show 34. Very good. I'm going to have to find all those links and put them in the show notes. Well, looking at your, at your little intro bio on Facebook, what's the last word on sports? Last word on sports. I'm glad you asked. Um, that is a, um, just an all around sports, uh, website is sort of like, uh, I mean, it's basically for writers. Um, you know, you pick a sport, you pick a team and then you just cover it. So, um, I cover the Texas Rangers, obviously. And, uh, obviously doing, it's not obvious to me. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, I've been doing that for about a year now and I've actually just been promoted to one of the editors of the, of the website. So, that's been a lot of fun um, now that I know how to do it. And, uh, um, but yeah, I've been doing, I've been writing for about a year and a half now. And um, back in June, um, the one that we just had, uh, I, I got credentialed to do a couple of uh, Texas Rangers games from the press box. Wow. How mm-hmm. does that feel? It feels so good. Um <laughs> A little bit nerve wracking if you're afraid of heights because I was about five floors up. Um, so just try not to stare at the field if you're standing up too quickly. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's most people would dread it, but it's a lot of fun having a writing deadline because you're going up against adrenaline. Yes, um, especially when you cover the game in person. Which a year later after the pandemic, who would have thought that would have been possible? Now, is this writing or on air, or are you recording anything? What are you doing when you're in the press box? Uh, for last word, it's just writing. Writing. I mean, I, I could figure you can channel your inner Bob Euchre. <laughs> just a bit outside. Oh, that guy was amazing in that show. And funny, yep. uh, let's see, I guess one of the... In my one of my endeavors was down. I was working for a, a company that's uh, once again now defunct called Sports World of Homestead, and they mm-hmm. had leased the stadium down in Homestead, Florida, which was the I don't know, the, I guess the winter home of the Baltimore Orioles. So we had press boxes that we could play with, and and nice. we had you know different offices, and and um, you know each each one of us would take one of the. Um, I guess one of the, uh, what do they call the, those boxes that the the, the rich people uh, or the companies buy those those boxes up there? Corporate boxes, <laughs> like a, a corporate box, like in gla- yeah. in glass, and we can have little parties or little uh, get-togethers and functions up there, and that was yeah. kind of fun. But uh, it started to fall apart, and I realized why the the Baltimore Orioles gave it up because every time it rained, it would leak real yeah. bad. Have you? I mean, it, working in in the uh, the Ranger Stadium. I'm guessing that they take care of it a little bit better than that. Yeah, they do. Well, um, like I said, they just built a brand new ballpark with a retractable roof. So yeah, it's maintained very nicely. 
Well, I mean, tell me about the stadium and and how it is. Uh, do you get to meet up with some of the Rangers and get some one on one interviewing with them for your writing, or or do you talk to any of the staff at all? Um, well, I'm sure I will. Like the more I get credentialed, I've only been credentialed twice this year. It's hard to get in there. Um, it just kind of depends on if a spot's opened up, and it it also depends on what you've done as an individual writer to get up there as well. Well, sometimes um, you just got to push on in there, don't you? Do you, do you yeah. find that you have to be more? You, you let your alpha fly yeah. through, you know? And wow, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of timid, yeah. but I I really want to get into this job, and yep. you, you got to push your way in. I mean, sometimes yeah, you, you got to you got to act like you own the place, but mm -hmm. without being too much of a jerk, I guess. Yeah, and as as far as getting down on the field and interviewing players, that's just now starting to open back up with. COVID, I mean, everything's been shut down. Um, so they're just trying to loosen the guidelines there, but it's still mostly, you know, Zoom interviews and, and things like that. Oh, I'm so ready to, for that to be over. I have the, <laughs> the Moderna coursing through my veins. I felt yeah. like Superman the second shot. Even the yeah. first shot felt good, but the second shot, uh -huh. I was like, yeah, I can go back out into the world. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> I, I, I felt so sick after this first shot or after the second shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess there's a little soreness and tenderness, but, but, uh, you know, kids, you know, get your shot. Go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's not going to hurt anybody. It's going to help everybody, you know, uh, <laughs> but I know that there, there's a controversy on that. Yeah. Uh, people are, I'm going to get chipped. <laughs> well, uh. <laughs> is it any different than the chip that's in your phone that you're like basically stuck to anyway? <laughs> yeah, I don't want anybody following me around. Oh, look at that <laughs> smartphone you got in your hands. Yeah, they're exactly. All, they're following you around. Uh -huh. you <laughs> you're not off the grid. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I don't want anybody listening into my conversations. Alexa, order me a bag of chips. <laughs> Alexa, right? Listen and uh, activate mine over here. <laughs> Listening to your conversations all the time. Oh yeah. my gosh! Oh, the world yeah. that we live in. Well, I mean, it's it's content. It's feed me now. What's going to set your? I mean, that's what we're trying to figure out, right? Is what's going to set your program uh, yeah. apart from other programs? What's going to make it desirable for the uh, the type of people that you want to uh, consume it? Are you making a show for you? Because I every t I have an online radio station, uh, radiowhat.com, sitting here next to me, and mm -hmm. I play the music that I want to hear. And I figure sure. if I want to hear it, somebody else will. So do you yeah. talk about stuff that you want to hear, or do you have to bow down or succumb to sometimes getting fed, hey, why don't you talk about this today? Most of the time I talk about what I want to hear, but if somebody like asks me to talk to talk about something, I'll talk about that. And really... I kind of treat my writing the same way. Like I write, I write about what I want to write about. Um, so long as it's re relevant and I also write it in a way that I would want to read it as well. You know, just kind of free flowing, not too much fluff, just like half stats, half storytelling and really just make it interesting. That's going to make it interesting for the, if you, I guess you, you do. You, it's not all stats. You have to put some kind of a story into it yeah. to, to make it interesting for people. Now, mm -hmm. do you put that out, that the writing out in an audio version as well? Do you make it part of your show, the writing that you do? Um, not so much the right. Like I plug it a lot, like kind of dr drive people to to the writing, but like I don't really uh, put it in audio form yet. I guess I, I should be guilty for starting, uh, uh, you know, com uh, convincing people to start a lot of podcasts. There's a, yeah. a there's a few bloggers out there. They write pages and pages of blogs, and I say, you know, I, I don't have time to read this. But mm -hmm. if you put it straight into my ears, if yeah. you read this onto a microphone and and put it out there as a podcast, I will listen to it. I will I consume should. it. And then if you throw a few ads in there, hey, maybe you can get a sponsor out of it. That, that you know, uh, but uh, I've convinced so many people that do blogs to make a podcast. So <laughs> I, I guess I'm a dummy. Uh, when yeah. I started, there was seven hundred thousand podcasts, and I think we're up mm. to uh, up into a million podcasts. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yep. And since mine is my writing is mostly articles, they're nice and they're nice, sweet and short. I mean, they're five hundred words or less each time. So. 
Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've done some of these shows where they're three hours, 45 minutes, you know, uh, and, and they were interesting conversations to be sure. I, I had a great time chatting with people, uh, you know, almost four hours sitting on their mm-hmm. couch or talking to them, uh, you know, face to face pre COVID, you know, just yeah. having them in the, in the, in the same room with me. But, uh, you know, I, I think I try to, to limit it down now to about an hour. That's usually right. uh, enough time uh, taken away from somebody, taken away from, well, I mean, uh, you, you have your girl out there somewhere. I'm sure she, she wants to talk to you a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what are the, the plans for Nate Miller on the horizon? Any other things you want to plug? Um, right now it's just the show and my writing and hopefully, you know, getting credentialed for more Rangers games that, that would be uh, really cool too. Um, right now it's, it's kind of on hold because I'm trying to find a better way into the ballpark. Uh, When they built the ballpark, they weren't really, you know, handicapped accessible. So I'm just trying to find, find a way to work with them on that. And hopefully get that all figured out soon, too. And um, I'm hoping, you know, if I get credentialed for more games to kind of network, because you won't find a better networking opportunity than that. Um, You know, just network a little bit, you know, try to get plugged in there a little bit more full time and, you know, just go from there. When you say credentials, I figured you had credentials forever. Once they give them to you, you go, oh, now you you have a free pass every time there's a press function (laughs) yep um really just um but you have to like reserve your uh seats daily like and really i'm just starting out so you you do kind of have to do it every day all right i mean do you have to dress a certain way do you have a a polo shirt for the fb uh, the fishbowl network radio um really it's it's business casual like kind of like a flannel shirt uh, or a striped shirt or any kind of polo shirt. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I saw you were from Michigan, so I wore my, my car shirt. This one is like a bunch of uh, cars on Route 66. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I figure you being from a car uh, area. Now, what, we didn't even get to it. What what do, what do you, what did your mom and dad do uh, while you were growing up? Um, my dad was a corrections officer. And my mom was self-employed, doing the same thing that she's doing today. She sells purses and uh, at craft shows. She sews and sells purses. She's a se- uh, seamstress. Well, plug the purses, honey. Plug them. <laughs> um, yeah, you can find her on Facebook, Purses by Robin. Robin with a Y or Robin with an I? I. That's fantastic. Purses by Robin. Little plug mm-hmm. for the mama. We got to take care of our mamas. And she, right on. she's still working. That's fantastic, man. My, yep. my mom just retired uh, from nursing, uh, you know, after oh, so nice. many years. And my great, uh, my grandma is still kicking 90, 92 years old, still kicking. I love awesome. it down there in the Florida keys. I mean, so, awesome. all right. Um, so you're, you're, you're writing, you're making uh, shows uh, every Wednesday from one to two, where where can they find that show exactly? Is on the Phil- Fishbowl Radio Network. Yep, FBRN dot US. Fantastic, man! Any shout outs you need to give uh, on the way out of this podcast? Uh, well, uh, my girlfriend Laurie. <laughs> so, uh, um, she's uh, she's awesome, and um, hope to uh, see her again soon. And my co-host Billy Ball. Well, it's so, so uh, funny. Uh, we use sports references when we're talking about our significant others. Like, uh, you outkicked your coverage on that one. You, <laughs> you scored a home run with that one. Yep. <laughs> I, I find that the generosity of women never ceases to amaze me. It's it's a, a beautiful thing when you find somebody and, and get together. But uh, And then Billy Ball, man, that's fantastic. Well, what, were her, what, was, uh, what was her previous credentials before she became your partner in crime i don't know if you call her a sidekick uh, she's, oh, yeah. she's a full partner yeah she is um no she used to be a tour guide for the texas rangers so i guess she knew that aspect of it you know yep. the all the facts and figures that she had to rattle off oh yeah that's yep. great that's so, great what would that be the color man or that that gives you those little extra facts and figures 
What, what's yeah. the dynamic with, with the duo like that usually? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we're, we'll, we'll, we're both color men, <laughs> color analysts, you know, um, and we, and we just like, we talk about sports, but yeah, we're just as capable of going off into a tangent about music or mu- movies or whatever else. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It is man. And I, I, I have trouble catching it from one to two on a Wednesday, but if I can find it afterwards on the, on the, uh, FBRN network, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that, that helps a lot that I can find mm-hmm. it and I can consume it in my own time. Is it out there on video form or is it an audio form? Uh, yeah, well we do it. We do it, uh, Facebook live. Yes, um, I know that. I know that and, it's Facebook uh, live, but then once, once it comes off the live, then what? Yeah. Um, well after it comes out, I'm going to, I'm going to start doing this more. Um, after it comes out live, I'm going to put the um, like the, the finished version of the video on the Basement Show's Facebook page. Very good. Very good. Put it out there all over the place, man. Let let people know all about it. All right. Um, well, let's wind this thing up, man. Uh, I mean, I, I, I kind of wanted to know more about baseball, but I, and I know you've got a lot of baseball knowledge in your head. Uh, when did yes, you find, well, when did you find a, an affinity for that? Uh, did you, have you always loved baseball and, and sports? Yeah, I've always loved baseball. Um, still getting into other sports, like as we speak, but baseball has always been with me. Um, started playing it when I was about 10 years old and, um, didn't like, kind of thought you know i don't really have a future in playing it but maybe i can cover it some other way that's fantastic man are you one of those guys that can rattle off stats back in 1979 yeah i can <laughs> that's so. amazing to me somebody who has a, a mind like a, a well i guess a mind for that and that that'll keep your your synapses firing hopefully for a long long time right yeah All right, my man. Well, it has been a distinct pleasure chatting with the Nate Miller. (laughs) Um, Pleasure here as well. Oh, I usually finish these things off with last words for the people. This could be the words to live by stuff that you, you heard a long, long time ago or, or just whatever pops into your head at this moment in time. Now, I don't want this to be the last time that we talk as things progress. If you have more things that you want to, to promote in the future, Come on back on the What Makes You Famous podcast there, Nate Miller. Sure thing. Last sure thing. words. Give the last words for the people. Well, um, are you looking for something inspirational or? <laughs> Whatever pops into your head, man. Uh, live it. Live for every day. Don't wear socks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, just, you know, life is short. Enjoy it. Well, there you have it, party people. Nate Miller. What a cool dude. Oh, man. I knew it was going to be good. That guy, he is a a cool cat. I I get to follow him from time to time. I followed him on his Facebook page and uh, various social networks, mostly on Facebook, because that's where he puts out the, the basement show of his i encourage you to check that out Uh, it's hard to do a show by yourself so i'm glad he's got a partner in billy ball (laughs) that is a cool name for a sports caster a sports announcer Uh, you know i'm not much into sports but i do appreciate people that can rattle off stats that can come up with uh information you know because athletes hey they've pushed themselves to the limits I mean, some of these athletes did have a natural ability while they were growing up, but you have to fine-tune that. It doesn't come naturally. You have to fine-tune all that ability. So I appreciate the sports stars, the cur- current gladiators, I guess, uh, of our world. I, well, could you call them the gladiators or is it the, the army? Hmm. I just went off on a tangent in my own head. Now, maybe I'm battling my own self. <laughs> firing synapses all right thank you nate miller for being a part of the what makes you famous podcast i appreciate that so much man Uh, all your links will be in the show notes Uh, and you're cool man you're part of the uh, the fishbowl radio network so look them up man and find 
out more about Nate Miller. Put them on your Facebook feed. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, you know, if you, now, if you, I'm turning my attention to you, would like to be a part of the What Makes You Famous podcast, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.